the Crane Room for your lunch and dinner rendezvous. You'll enjoy their pleasant atmosphere. The Crane Room takes pride in their wide variety menu. Appetizers, sandwiches, soups, salads, entrees, pasta, and the best burgers in town. Newcastle's best selection of domestic, import, and craft beers from around the world and the Crane Room features a 35-tap draft system. Ask about their daily specials that will please you every time. The Crane Room is located at 3009 Wilmington Road in Neshanic Township. Call 724-656-1553. from the Silk Road Market. Now, you've heard us say on Newswatch about the Silk Road Market. And I, I, I was just telling her all the things we told her about her. <laughs> you know, so Wendy, welcome. Thank you very much. And it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about, <laughs> about yourself and about the Silk Road Market? As far as history about myself? Just where you're from. Okay. Uh, I'm actually born and raised in New Wilmington, PA. Um, grew up, and like most young children, couldn't wait to get out of there. So I did. <laughs> and then I couldn't wait to get back. So <laughs> I did. Um, but I have a long history of uh, purchasing, um, importing, things like that. So I ended up in a, a job at one point that things were, I'm going to say, less than ethical. Um, dealing with people overseas, and it just left an incredibly unsettling feeling. Um, so I became aware of fair trade, started learning more about fair trade and the difference that it can make and the huge impact globally that it can make. And literally in a period of six months, I made a decision. I walked away from my career, I mortgaged my house, and I opened the store. And I've been at it for nine years now. There you go. There you go. That is fantastic. Yeah, there you go. Now, what are some of the items, before we get into about your trip, mm -hmm. and I, and I want to talk about this, what, what are some, some of the items that somebody would find at Silk Road Market? Me being a Christmas kind of guy, mm -hmm. I knew about the international the ornaments. Christmas ornaments. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of ornaments. Um, the thing most common, I think, uh, in fair trade is the coffee and the chocolate. That's where most people have heard of it. Most people have seen it. So I have a ton of coffee and quite a bit of chocolate because I like to sample it. <laughs> um, but then it does get into jewelry and purses, um, mugs, uh, scarves, Christmas ornaments, um, nativities. Go. That's one of my big, I always try, uh, my nativities come out uh, beginning of November every year, and I try to have at least 50. So it'll be different materials, different countries, all of them fair trade. But it, you'll just it'll it'll be basically walking through the world in nativities. Just like what are some of the countries that you have? It's going to primarily be developing nations. Okay. So there's a ton from Africa, um, Southern Asia, and uh, I'm growing a lot in Latin America, South America, those regions. Oh, that's great. And the Middle East, of course. Now you went on this trip mm -hmm. and it says Amy and Amy Sapkowiak is a very good friend of mine okay. I met her years ago when I started fair trade and she has her own business in Pittsburgh and she is the one who first took me down to Nicaragua the first time so this was actually my second trip down and the first time was uneventful fun trip met great people um, this trip she's like Wendy, 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 you know, I'm going to go find the balsa wood carvers in the Salentinami Islands. Do you want to come? Sure. I'd love, like, I love a good adventure. Sure. And she's like, oh, it's going to be an adventure. I'm like, excellent. <laughs> and that's what started the whole thing. So we literally started talking the beginning of December, um, kibitzing, what can we do, where can we go? And the trip all pulled off within about 30 days. Wow. Now, what you said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> balsa. Balsa wood. It's just a tree. It's a kind of tree. It grows incredibly fast. 
so it's considered sustainable and that's one of the main concerns with fair trade is we want to be sustainable um, because if you deplete your environment you're no longer going to have something to live off of so they're always trying to find things that they can use like bamboo um, the balsa wood things trash they use a lot of trash in fair trade because that's a unfortunately a steady resource for them um, there's a place in Ethiopia that uses bullet casings because unfortunately Ethiopia has had so much more bullet casings are a ready resource. So in the Salentaname Islands, the one thing they have is these balsa wood trees. And they grow, um, I'm gonna say the diameter was about 18 inches in two years. Wow. Very quick to grow. And they manage them very smartly. So they'll cut down trees, obviously, to do the, ca the carvings, but they're constantly planting new trees so that within two years, these new trees are growing. So there, it's this constant, cutting, carving, growing, so they're, they're never without balsa wood to carve. Okay, now this trip, and I have it written here, but kind of give us a summary of how you get from New Wilmington to the trip you did, mm -hmm. and then back again. Because it says there was a six hour yeah, that boat ride was something else. <laughs> <laughs> that was the adventure we weren't planning. <laughs> and that usually happens. And, and that's, that's the fun thing. I'm one of those people, and my mom will tell you, I, uh, that little voice in your head that says, ooh, yeah, that's not a good idea. I don't have that. Okay. Like, I just jump in, I go, and the way I see it, if something happens, I've got a good story to tell hopefully on the other side. <laughs> um, so the, to get from here to Nicaragua, it's actually only about six hours. Like, it doesn't take long. Um, you fly Pittsburgh to Miami, Miami to Managua, which is in Nicaragua. So we had approximately a six-hour drive um, from Managua down to um, this place called San Juan. And we had to leave San Juan by boat to get to the Salentaname Islands because there's no roads. Okay. So everything is by boat. Now they now have a speedboat, which was excellent because that was 45 minutes. Two years ago, um, all they had was a slow boat, and it was a two-hour. It was a two-hour tour. <laughs> it took two hours. So we were thrilled when we found out they now have speedboats. But there's one boat onto the island every day and one boat off. And the reason that happens is Lake Nicaragua is famous for drug trafficking. So the military in Nicaragua has limited it to two boats total a day and everyone has to be registered. So you can't just hop on a boat and go somewhere. You have to register with the military, say where you're going, how long you're gonna be there, when you're gonna come back. So we take this 45 minute boat over, have a fantastic time. We're there, well, kinda. Um, we're there for three days. And on the way back, the, the way it works, you don't register. There's no sign up for this boat. You just go stand on the dock. So the first two mornings, we're eating breakfast somewhere. We stayed in this little bungalow, and we could see the dock, and we counted how many people were there every morning, and every morning it was like three, four, and the boat can hold 12. So we're like, no worries, no problem. Right. We'll be fine. We went over the morning we were leaving, and we were number, what was it, 9, 10, 11, and 12, and the boat came, and it only held nine. Wow. So typically speaking, standard day we would have had to have just waited till the next day because we wouldn't have fit on that one boat so it just turned into this long ordeal we actually um, were at the dock for about an hour and a half trying to get it figured out because they had to get special permission from the military for somebody else to take us across and even for our guy to go across and come back wow so you know we're waiting while all this is happening the, that's it, it's insane it's really insane and i understand why it happens there's there's a reason behind everything but we ended up, our first driver left. They had permission for him. Um, what we found out later is they had permission for him to come back and get us. Okay. This other gentleman goes and talks to the military and he says, let me take him. You know, it's an hour and a half right. for this guy to come back because it's 45 minutes each way. Right. Let me just go ahead and take him. Or at least this is what we thought. And the military said, fine. So we all load onto this boat, the four of us. No life jackets, nothing. Start across this lake. We get halfway, and he just starts idling his engine, and he stops. We're like, what's going on? 
<laughs> why, why are you stopping? Because you can't. I mean, it's a big enough. It's not huge, but it's big enough. You can't swim. To, I can't swim to shore. Some people okay. can. I, mm. Bigger than Lake Britain. <laughs> bigger is much bigger than Britain. Well, yeah. So we're just idling. He's like, yeah, well, um, I only have permission to take you halfway. We're waiting for the guy to come back and the first driver to come back and get you. I'm allowed to, we're allowed to switch mid, mid lake. Mid -lake. Yeah. Okay. When's he going to get here? Ah, any time now. And you hear that a lot. Down. Any, any time now. Any time now. Okay, but we're not hearing him. And you can hear him from a ways away. So we're sitting, sun's beating down, and I'm calm by nature. Just, I like the sun. Right. I like the water. It's a day, you know, whatever. Day on the lake. So an hour passes. We still don't hear anything. What's going on? Where's the guy? Why don't you call him? Why well, can't? What do you mean you can't? Well, my cell phone just died. What? <laughs> what do you mean your cell phone just died? He's like, yeah, I can't call him. Great. So Jairo does the shipping for us. Jairo okay. is actually a resident of Nicaragua. Okay. And he was with us, thank goodness. Um, so he's like, here's my phone. What's the number? We call the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be right there. We're like, we don't hear him. We still don't hear him. You should wow. hear It's a speedboat. You should hear him. So anytime now, anytime now. We sit another hour. All of a sudden, the guy stops the boat. Why'd you just cut the engine? Oh, I ran out of gas. Oh, oh my word! In the middle of the lake. In the middle of the lake. No cell phone. No gas. We don't hear anything. Like there's no one coming for us. So long story, much longer. It was six hours. It was six hours from. He actually picked us up. It was about five hours until he picked us up. We see this storm brewing, and this was part of the, like, a couple of my friends were a little nervous because you could see the storm clouds in the distance. Coming right at you. They were. There were two clouds, and they merged, and then they started heading straight, straight for us. So that is not optimal to be on the lake Thank in the midst goodness. of a storm yeah. with no life jackets. Um, but eventually the guy came, and he picked us up, and we transferred, again, mid-lake from one boat to another. And he starts taking off, and the only way to get from where we were to the dock was through the storm. So two of us are in the front, two are in the back. It was the duck and cover, seriously duck and cover, because stuff was pelting us. He um, at one point went through a flock of birds that were sitting on the lake. He didn't slow down, he, didn't, he just went whoosh. So these birds are whipping over <laughs> our heads. And it was just, the whole thing was just, it was a comedy. It was truly a comedy. But we made it. And now I have a great story to tell. There you go. Well, we're going to be back with Wendy, and she's going to tell us a whole lot more right after this message. Joshua Sun Rehabilitation Center. From the moment you arrive, you know that you're in the right place. Dr. John Wrightson listens first. He pays attention to detail. and then makes the determination. Joshua Sun Rehabilitation. We make the pain go away. Hi friends, I'm Gary West. And whether you find Augustine's Pizza at your local grocery store or at their restaurant in Newcastle, the folks at Augustine's Pizza hope that their pizza is always your first choice for any and all occasions. Welcome back in this segment. What of these brought some with with her for us to share and they're going to appear behind us excuse us we don't want to block anybody's view but wendy's going to tell us about her trip and these pictures that she brought back wendy go ahead okay um the first picture we're looking at is actually uh, the streets of managua and um, what i find absolutely fascinating when you fly into managua um, you see just darkness. The whole countryside is just absolutely filled with darkness. And you come close to Managua and you see these little pots of gold. And it's lights and it's actually a tree um, like you see behind me. And it, it's this weird little, little appearance because the country is so poor and they don't have electricity and they don't, places don't have plumbing. Um, but in the city they do. And the president feels it's so important for visitors um, to see the wealth and to see that they do have electricity. So he actually pours 
thousands and thousands of dollars into these lights, um, into this appearance, um, to, to basically lead people to believe that the country is wealthy overall, when in fact um, they're not. They're, they're incredibly poor. Wow. And, and when you say that, they, so they, there's no roads or highways or anything? There's uh, highways. Um, some of them are a little rough. <laughs> <laughs> It's more, a lot of it's going to be dirt. Um, you'll find little dirt roads. You will find cobblestones. Um, more where I notice it is, I mean, in hotels we have lights, and in hotels we have a bathroom. There's no hot water. Um, but there's, you know, there's a shower facility in that. But when you go into the villagers' homes, they don't have any of that. Um, the, the big thing, one of my ceramic artists, Duilio, uh, the big thing this time, um, last time he didn't have plumbing, this time some nonprofit paid to put a toilet in his house. So he is one of the few houses in that entire village. And, and we're not talking about, you know, a five house village. It's substantial. Wow. But he's one of the few houses that now have plumbing. Now, go ahead. I don't want to interrupt you. No, that's you. totally Con fine. Continuing through. Uh, the next picture we come to, it's actually one of the pictures on Isla Mancaron, is what it's called. It's part of the Salentiname Islands. And that's where the balsa wood carvers are. And as soon as you get off that speedboat, <laughs> mm -hmm. you're just totally enveloped by jungle. And it, it's beautiful and it's breathtaking. Um, there's white egrets everywhere. They, they catch their own fish. They grow their own vegetables. There's no roads. Like there's little paths, but there's no cars, there's no roads, there's nothing. So what we're actually looking at behind us, it's the aura pendula bird. Um, and it's this beautiful bird with this, the, and you can see the nest. It, it's this funky little drop-like nest, and they're just everywhere. I'd never seen one before. It, it was kind of yes. cool. It was like walking through an aviary. Wow. Only it was daily life, which is kind of cool. That, it's fascinating as I look at these pictures that to just see some pl place untouched. It really, it really is, and it, it's a fully sustainable community, which impresses me. So, like I said, they grow all their own vegetables. They catch their own fish. Um, they grow their own rice, they grow their own coffee, their own chocolate, literally 90% of what they need day to day, they grow for themselves. Now, are the cities more modern or no, not really? In Nicaragua in a whole, yes. They're much more modern. You know, they're going to have the lights, they're going to have the plumbing. But when you're working with fair trade, you're working in areas yes, that are poverty stricken. Um, so they don't. And that's just the... The interesting, I've noticed, this is my second trip down, and in both trips, they don't have much. They have very little, but I have never seen happier people in my life. Wow. They're just, it's about family, it's about friends, it's about good living. You know, there's no iPods, no Wii's, no... Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. Now, they do have internet centers, but in one town, there will be one internet center, and that's it. That's their only connection to the outside world. Now, going through the rest of these pictures. Sure. Um, the next one is actually as we're coming into the jungle. Okay. Um, so that morning, we were actually going to see a different family of balsa wood carvers. And we didn't realize ahead of time we were actually going to be doing a jungle trek. <laughs> 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 so we're in sandals. We were not in hiking boots. We, we went, Antonio is the gentleman who owns the, he doesn't own it, he manages the cooperative of the balsa wood carvers. And, He's like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'll take you over to sector two. That's where all the really good ones are. You know, okay, fine. So there we are in our sandals, doing our little jaunt. We get to his little hut, and he's wearing uh, rubber boots, and he has a loaded gun and a machete. And we're looking at our shoes, and we're looking at him. We're like, oh, this is not good. <laughs> this is not good at all. But we went, you know, and it was, a, it was an hour and a half trek one way. Walking. Walking to get to this gentleman's wow. house. <laughs> and then an hour and a half back. And it was actually, we made it to two houses, is all we made it to, because the sun started to set. And the sun's setting, and we have an hour and a half walk back, and we're like, mm, yeah, we're heading back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the picture you're seeing now is before we knew just how long of a walk we had. <laughs> wow. But it's beautiful. It, it actually reminds me of things you could see in the countryside here in Pennsylvania. Okay. You know, that's, I think one of the things I wasn't aware of is they call it jungle. To me, it's a heavy forest. Okay. You know, we grew up in a place, and we're living in a place that has heavy forest. 
Yes. The only yes. difference is they have monkeys and bigger snakes. <laughs> 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 Much bigger snakes. <laughs> I'm, I'm really a city person. <laughs> So then, uh, moving to the next picture, it's, it's um, a gentleman and his son carving balsa wood. And that's typically how we would see them, sitting on a log. And th that's how they teach. So the, the father, that's what he does all day, is he carves. And we talked to that gentleman for about an hour. And in that hour, I saw him do six pieces. Wow. It's incredibly fast. The blades are incredibly sharp. Um, that's one of the things he offered to let us try. And I'm like, no. <laughs> because <laughs> I am not good with knives. Um, but his children will sit and watch him, and that's how, they learn. that's how they learn. That's how they learn. They watch, and then one day he gives them a, um, a small knife. Like, he starts with a pretty big blade, but he'll start them off with a small knife and a small piece of balsa, and they just start playing. And they just start mm -hmm. carving it. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. It really is. Um, the next picture we're coming to is... It's a, a perfect example of their sustainable living. Um, you know, they grow their own chocolate, and what you're seeing is the cacao. So the cacao fruit, they, they'll actually take the fruit, crack it open, and then dry what's inside and pulverize it, and that's what makes cocoa. Cacao. Cacao, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I'm a chocolate fiend. I have never met a piece of chocolate I don't love. Yeah. So when I heard that and he had one open, he's like, do you want to try it? And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah I want to try it. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> it was slimy and ooh, it was not good. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very glad they figured out a way to change it. <laughs> so um, moving on, it's Second Island. Uh, the second day we went to a different island called La Panata. And what's amazing to me about Nicaragua is every village, every area has their own strength. They have their own craft. They have what they excel in. So in Mancaron, they do balsa wood. In La Venata, um, they're known for their primitive painting. So it's not something that I would probably have at the shop. But when you have an opportunity to go see a village where they do nothing but paint, right. why would right. you not? So we spent the day there watching him. And Rodolfo is actually, he's won um, national awards in Nicaragua for his painting. And what you see him actually doing right there, I um, bought a little paint <laughs> mm -hmm. and I had him sign it for me. Oh, that's great. So he's actually signing it with his grandson watching. Now, they have schools? They do. Um, they do. It, it's, yeah, it, they do. It's not what we have. It's not what we have. Um, they have to pay for uniforms. They have to, so not everybody can go. But they do have schools, and and they do learn the basics. And those that don't have schools, they do try to teach them at home. You know, they they really do understand um, that an education is important. Wow. Now let's let's go on. As we go. Um, this is actually Rodolfo's grandson, and okay. he's right at the edge of the lake. And what you see him standing by is their laundry. Uh, so it's literally wooden platforms, and they just, it, it's almost like a washerboard. And they wash mm -hmm. their stuff right in the lake mm -hmm. while the speedboats go by. While the speedboats go by. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Wow. And Rodolfo, his grandson actually was doing a couple pieces while we were there. Just, I mean, he's more mentoring around because he's so little, um, but he was giving it a go, giving there it a good go. go. Um, at this point, uh, the pictures are going to take us to a different village, and we're going into San Juan de Oriente. And San Juan de Oriente is known for its ceramics. Um, they do, they use a volcanic clay to do that. So what you're actually seeing is someone painting a vase. They have what's called a kick wheel. It's operated all by foot, by wow. kicking back and forth. And I got a chance to try it, and it is not easy. It is, <laughs> yeah. It's very hard. Ceramics are very hard, I'm going to tell you. And getting your foot going, like I evidently have no foot coordination. <laughs> and no foot speed. Because, I, I mean, they have that thing whipping. It's unbelievable how fast that goes. And I, mine was barely creeping. So I basically made a modern ashtray <laughs> <laughs> but they do these amazing pieces and it's all and then they paint it all using this kick wheel and again it, there's no electricity so it's all foot powered and when they um, fire it 
it's a brick kiln. So it's literally just fire. So in San Juan this time, I ended up finding a bamboo basket weaver, which I had never seen before. So what you're actually seeing right now is a woman uh, weaving a basket. basket. And she just, the speed at which, because again, I'm, I'm not good at it. I don't pretend to be good at it. I'm not even going to try. I ordered six baskets from her uh, before I left. And wow. I saw her on Friday afternoon, and she had them ready to pick up on Sunday morning. So, uh, you know, they really, they, they pick one thing, they do it well, they learn at it, they get exceptional, and that's their income. Wow. So the next picture is in Messiah. And again, it's different villages have their different strengths. Uh, this gentleman is one of three that's right along that road, and he uses recycled automobile parts. He melts down the aluminum. Now, they have automobiles there. In the cities, they would, yeah. And, and some of the people in the country do as well. How do you get down the path? It's just wide. <laughs> well, some of the bigger cities, like San Juan, it's they're going to have bigger roads. It, it's the islands where there's nothing. Okay. It's so you know there there are the, the roads are pretty wide. It's enough for at least one car. It's like I found my car stuck in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what you're what they actually do is they it's this jury rigged system that's oil drums. So they'll have one oil drum at the bottom where they light the fire, they start the fire, and there's a second oil drum slightly above it that's got the oil dripping, and they've got a leaf blower attached to the bottom one. So they'll start the oil, they throw in the match, and then they start the leaf blower. And the leaf blower will actually blow that fire in, is that centrifugal motion? Yeah. So it's actually spinning. So as you're standing there looking at this oil drum set on its side, you see fire spinning. And then they get all these this aluminum garbage and shove it in this drum and just leave it there until it melts. That's, wow. So then what you're actually seeing right now is they've poured that into a bucket, the melted aluminum, right. and they're, they sand cast it. So they've got their molds prepared already and they're pouring it into the, the molds to make, they make crosses, angels, dishes, it's just unbelievable what they can do. Just anything. Just anything. Mm -hmm. Nick. So then the next picture was a, we had a fun day. <laughs> um, Nicaragua has a lot of volcanoes. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, please tell me no. <laughs> so we took a volcano tour. So the mist that you're seeing in front of this, the, the sunset, is actually sulfur gas. It's an active volcano. Like it doesn't, it rumbles, it, it gurgles, it, it has a grouchy, uh, grouchy stomach is about it. Like it, it'll, there's some earthquakes and it grumbles a little bit and it smokes, but it hasn't spewed lava recently that I know of. So we took a tour. My adventure is switching pizza shops. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of cool. I have to say it was kind of cool. And the interesting thing, the, the cross you see at the top um, is partially because the history of the specific volcano in ancient times, it's where um, they used to perform human sacrifices. So they actually took okay. us down to the area that they would push over the lucky person. person. And it was years after that that as the missionaries came in, they found it to be a very good spot to plant a cross, Pretty which I good. think we can imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's, it's beautiful. It's actually... I never thought a volcano would be absolutely beautiful, but it was absolutely beautiful. Burned my eyes, but it was yeah. <laughs> absolutely beautiful. You know, it, it's some because being one of those sacrifices could really burn you up. I guess. It could <laughs> really burn you up. Oh, that's, that's a scorcher. <laughs> <laughs> I do that with Gary all the time. <laughs> so the last picture I have, um, and I just wanted to end with this because this picture summarizes why it is I do what I do. Um, this is actually the slums in Tipitapa. This is where they live. There's hundreds of homes. It's just row after row after row. Um, they're made out of, uh, the interesting thing is we've started noticing how as they become more economically stable, each family will change the material that their house is made of. So what you're seeing here is basically the first step where it's tin. And then what you'll see happening is some um, cement block will come in next. And then, you know, it builds up from there. It starts going further. It does, it does. And, and it's, it's fascinating to watch. They'll do it in, in snippets. 
So it's not that they have to have enough money to rebuild their entire house. They'll just do one row, three blocks. They can afford three blocks, so they'll do three blocks. And then when they can afford three more, they'll do three more. And it's just this continual process. Continual process, it is. And eventually, a lot of them, I'm gonna, not a lot, some of them do get from that tin shack into a house that's a little more substantial. Wow. Well, now those were some of the pictures from Wendy's trip. And we're going to be right back to talk about some of the good she's seen on this great trip. So stay tuned. The Cedars is a great restaurant with outstanding Mediterranean food. The Cedars take up menu is second to none, featuring pizza, stromboli, hoagies, their famous lamb on the rod, and so much more. So when you're hungry and you want that Newcastle taste, make it Cedars. Now with two locations in Newcastle, 827 Addis Street on the east side and 1101 Highland Avenue. Call Cedars East, 724-658-9260 or Cedars North, 724-652-7657. Butts Flowers and Gifts offers top quality flower arrangements and gifts for any occasion. The pros at Butts Flowers and Gifts provide exceptional customer service and each bouquet is hand arranged. Stop in and check out their wide selection of gift baskets and plants. They provide flower delivery service locally to Newcastle, Bessemer, Edinburgh, New Wilmington, West Pittsburgh and across the nation. It's Butts Flowers at 120 East Washington Street in downtown Newcastle. Call 724-652-7727 or toll free 1-800-443-7726. Welcome back, and in this segment, we're going to talk about fair trade and free trade and okay. the difference. Okay. So, what's fair trade? Fair trade is about helping people living in poverty, um, primarily. It's based in developing nations. Uh, you will see some... It isn't, but primarily it is based in developing nations. It's based in areas uh, that are living in poverty. And what fair trade does, it, it believes you should trade fairly. So someone is paid, everyone's paid fair wages. They have safe working conditions. Um, some of the money is going into developing communities. So they're building hospitals, they're building schools, they're um, drinking water systems. Um, it's about giving them dignity, giving them respect. Um, because everyone deserves that. Right. And there's a lot of programs out there in Southeast Asia, in particular, where they're rehabilitating um, women who've been rescued from trafficking. Whatever form, it could be sex trafficking. I've seen trafficking in circuses. There's trafficking in brick factories. Like, it's just unbelievable the way people are trafficked. Um, but when women or young men are rescued, they really need rehabilitated. Uh, so they'll focus on that. It, it's more just a matter of trying to help people help themselves. Wow. Now, what's free trade? Free trade is typically agreements between our government and some other government that when we import their products, we don't have to pay duties. So a prime example, I used to be in the glass industry. And any time we would import glassware, we would pay, it was like 21% duty to our government because we imported this glassware. Now, if I were to import that same glassware from a country where we have a free trade agreement, as long as that glassware was covered under the agreement, I would pay no duty. Okay. So it's traded for free. Okay, so what are some of the countries that you do fair trade with? I directly, I'm gonna go directly. Um, because I do buy, I'm slowly morphing my store. I've been in business nine years. Okay. And when I first started, I bought um, through like 10,000 Villages, Global Crafts, like the, the big, what we consider the biggies. You know, they in turn then work with all these cooperatives. And slowly, as I've been building my own confidence, and you know, I start with one and then right. build to two, I'm now working direct with a lot of cooperatives. And um, the good majority at this point, I do uh, source direct. So I'm actually working with the artisans. I place an order, they make everything to my order, and then ship it to me. Um, so, like store wide, I probably have 50 countries represented, but as far as buying directly, um, Haiti, Thailand, uh, Palestine, Germany, uh, Nicaragua, Chile, Kyrgyzstan, Mexico, 
-hmm. And that might be it. Yeah, they're not developing. <laughs> wow. They make radiometers, which are just super cool. <laughs> wow. And you can't find them in the U.S. So that's just my own little foible that I absolutely love them. I found, it took me two years actually to find that cooperative, the glass floors cooperative that makes them. Wow. Now we're going to be back and we're going to talk about some of right after these messages. Goodbye, Norma Jean. If you're craving hot dogs and more, and you're in the area, then look no farther than Coney Island, downtown Newcastle on Kennedy Square. Tuscany Square Restaurant, 3470 Wilmington Road, where old world charm meets the modern conveniences of today. Spacious seating and amenities await. Fresh ingredients that make that just right pizza or entree. It's Tuscany Square for your next event. Stop and see us or give us a call at 724-654-0365. Welcome back and now we're going to talk about those items that might make the perfect gift at the Silk Road Market. So why don't you kind of tell us a little bit about the story. We have a little bit of everything. It's, I'm going to be honest, Angelo, I'm sorry, it's mostly girl-friendly. We don't have a ton of stuff for guys. Go figure. Go figure. Yeah. Um, but there's jewelry and um, purses and scarves and, of course, the balsa wood carvings and ceramics. Um, one of the most popular things I have right now is a butterfly wing, earrings. So it's a group in Peru. And they've paired up with a butterfly preserve, and a butterfly only lives three to four months. So when that butterfly passes away, somebody picks up the wings, and they convert them into jewelry, so they give them a second life. And that has been, hands down, my best seller so far this spring. That's what now, do they going dip for. them in something? They have a piece of acrylic on each side, and then there's a piece of um, a silver plate that goes around it, so you can actually see both sides of the wing. And what I never realized, depending on a butterfly, sometimes the front of their wing and the back is different. So you can catch how they iridesce. You can see I am totally smitten with them. I have started collecting wow. them myself. That is just, that's It's awesome. super cool. It's really super cool. Now, the, the countries that you get the holiday ornaments from, the mm -hmm. Christmas ornaments mm -hmm. from, mm -hmm. are they necessarily Christian countries or? Not necessarily. Um, because Christmas is, in this day and age, it's celebrated by non-Christians as well as Christians. Okay. Um, not the religious part of it, but, but they the, celebrate. the gift giving part of it, okay. they'll celebrate. Um, and with that, that sometimes comes the, the Christmas tree. Right. Now, obviously everything from Palestine, they are Christians. Right. Um, and that's, a good portion of, of what I have on the holiday ornaments just again that's one that I support directly so I make sure I support them wholeheartedly so I typically have a tree that's nothing but carved olive wood that comes okay. from Palestine now they're probably wondering do we put a speedboat on the Mechanic Creek to get I them wouldn't. a <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't but give it a try how do we get to the Silk Road Market? It's in downtown New Wilmington uh, it's uh, on the main square. It's the northwest corner. Okay. Look for the sign. We'll be looking for it. Please do. And I hope you enjoyed these segments with Wendy. I'm going to Farmery. Farmery. Yeah. See, I knew I was going to say it right. It's okay. And hope you enjoy watching NCTV 45 all the time. So. Stay tuned for more of this local programming, and we're going to speak with these uh, people about these messages and sponsors to pay for this great local programming, and we'll see you again. Thanks a bunch. They look like you should be able to find them in a lot of the bigger, more expensive department stores. I love this shrug. This shrug is by far my favorite accessory with this clothing line. This shrug allows me to wear it short and sexy or long and a little bit more flirty and flowy. 
So the transformation just happens just very uniquely by flipping the garment upside down. So if I remove my arms, flip the garment upside down, losing that scarf and collared effect, but again, taking that scarf and transforming it to the lower half, making it long and sleek, super simple. Bring it to NCTV 45.